I'm a, I'm a weather forecaster in that area. In that area, there's a weather forecaster on duty 24 7, 365 days a year. They're always on a weather watch, updating forecasts, and if necessary, issuing warnings. Now, that means when a forecaster is starting their shift, there's someone who has been on, and we do a handover briefing. This lets the incoming forecaster know what's happening at the moment, what's likely to happen, what we're certain about, what we're uncertain about, and things to look out for in, their, in the course of their shift. Now, due to COVID restrictions, we're doing these briefings virtually. And we also do these briefings for emergency groups in times of severe weather. Now, there are many different things that we look at. I just want to go through quickly with you some of the things we look at and how we give these briefings what and what we're looking for within. One of the first things that we would look at is the rainfall radar. So this lets us know if there's rain, there's showers, where it might be dry, and it gives us an idea of the intensity. But here we can see that there's some heavy echoes in the showers. But we know that there are some heavy falls there. There's also rain to the south that's coming into the southeast. And we can tell that that's going to push up north. Hot lights are very important as well. So here we can see that there is quite a lot of cloud over Ireland. It's just a few breaks in it, but there's more cloud coming. So it's going to be overall quite a cloudy night. We also have analysis charts. So this is where we can put in where the high pressure systems are, the low pressure systems, and the fronts. So here we can see that there's a cold front to the south of Ireland, and that's going to push in over us. And that's going to generate rain and be followed by showers. Observations are very important as well. So here we can see in graphical form observations from our weather stations, but we also view it in tabular form like this. This shows us what the weather where the weather stations are, what the wind speed is, direction, the type of weather, temperature, humidity, rain, and pressure. So here we can see that there's quite a lot of cloud around, there's drizzle, there's fog, there's showers. So there's quite a lot happening at the moment. But for the time being, there are no warnings in operation, no national warnings. So there is marine warning, a small craft warning. That means that it's going from mizzen head to Irish head to fair head, and it's going to reach four six times this evening, tonight, and tomorrow morning. So we look at these things before we look at any model outputs. But we like to look at the EC model, the global model. So it gives us a broad scale picture of what's happening, what's out there. So here we can see the, the low pressure to the south that's bringing up the rain and showers. We like to see the evolution, what's happening. So it's deepening as it's, sorry, it's filling as it's coming up over us. So the winds aren't very strong at all, but there is quite a lot of rain with it. And we like to see what's happening further ahead. And we can see the development of systems as they come into it. Very important to look at the upper air as well. So here, for example, we're looking at the jet stream. We need, like to know where it is and how strong it is. So if there is a developing low pressure system, for instance, and it's being caught up in the jet, there can be much deeper development and more rapid development. So we, we're always looking to see in the upper air what's happening. We also like to see how warm or cold the air is in the upper air, because if it's there's a huge difference between that the upper air is much cooler than, than the surface level, you get greater levels of convection. So that can lead to more intense showers or can lead to thunderstorms. But we have our own high resolution model, our harmony model. So this is, it doesn't capture such a large area, but it's in much greater detail. But this, in this particular chart, we're looking at cloud cover and three hourly precipitation. Now, the reason why we looked at all the observations to begin with is because we want to know, do we trust the model? We're always asking ourselves that. So we compare what the model is predicting for the moment and compare it to the observation for the moment. If it's doing a good job, then we have more faith in it for what it's going to tell us in the future. If it's 
not doing a good job, then we're more skeptical. But here we can see in the short term, this model runs 54 hours ahead, what's likely to happen. But we also have this model uh, runs with 10 other members of the same model. So we have our control, which is what the chart was that I showed you just now. And we have 10 other members. What we'd like to see is consistency. This also has the mean. We're looking at one hourly participation. So if there's a full consensus between the different members, again, we'll see, we'll have more confidence in what's going to happen. If there's a good few differences, then we'll be, we want to know why those differences are occurring. In this instance, there's pretty good agreement. Again, for our harmony model, we want to see the wind. Now, this shows wind barbs, and this indicates the strength of the wind and the points and the direction it's going in. You can see again for the next 54 hours what we're expecting. And in the short term, there's no strong winds, and we have a mainly southerly flow developing. We'd like to look at the max temperatures and the minimum temperatures as well. Now, again, we're always querying the model. Do we believe it? So if the cloud, if the model is showing too much cloud, then as they were tonight, if there is too much cloud in the model, then compared to what's actually happening, then we'd anticipate the temperature would drop down a little bit lower. But we also look to see, like see further ahead, what the general trend is. Are we getting, is it warming up? Is it cooling down? And we can see here that there is one cold night here on Wednesday night, but generally it's quite a mild scenario for the next few days. We also have a way of looking at the EC model in a different manner. The EC model is also run with, as an ensemble. So that means we have our deterministic model and we have 50 other members. And these are all run with slightly different initial conditions. And the idea behind this is to gives us an idea of the spread, the range of possibilities. Now, take this for instance, we have a meteogram here for Cork. And if you look here at the total precipitation, the solid blue line is the value that the deterministic model is predicting for precipitation amounts for that area. These are box and whisker plots. The black line, the solid black line in the middle of them is the mean. So here we can see for Thursday night into Wednesday, and again for Thursday night into Friday, the deterministic model is going much higher than most of the other members. So that means when we're looking at values from the deterministic model, we will anticipate that it could be going higher. And that was just a very quick run through of some of the things we would look at. The weather situation would dictate what we do look at. But I hope this gives you some idea of how we work, what we're looking for, and some of the different tools that we use. All right, thank you very much.